Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Kimalue in Abuja. Let's get straight ahead. Now, we begin by letting you know that the matter of the redesigning of the Naira uh, is not going away anytime soon. This is because the governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, has criticized the idea by the CBN to want to redesign the Naira. He says the ruling all progressive Congress APC is devising another means to stifle the opposition ahead of next year's general elections. Mr. Basaki insists that the currency redesigning at this critical period in the country can never be the solution to economic crises. He adds that the timing is equally off. Governor Basaki was speaking at the Edo PDP campaign office in Benin City. an economist, I can tell you categorically that this policy by the federal government, by the Central Bank of Nigeria, has no basis in economics. There is no reason to. This is purely political. When you decide to change your currency in such a ruptured manner, 30 days before an election, all you can adduce is that this is purely political. There's nothing urgent about our currency, changing our currency today. There's no urgency. The urgency for us is how to get food for our citizens so that we can remove the starvation in the land. The urgency is how to maintain discipline in our monetary policy so that we can manage our foreign exchange rate because we are so import dependent. But they think they are smart. They wanted to be politicians. They don't know how to be politicians. And they are trying to use the tools in their office to manage the currency so that they can sway money to the people they want to before the elections. Godwin Obasaki, Governor of Edo State, uh, taking on the CBN and the federal government on the redesigning of the Naira. Tonight, our conversation will be with one of the APC governors. And so there are a lot of issues to discuss. Of course, we'll be getting reactions to what the vice presidential candidate of the P APC, Kashim Shatima, said about Atiku Abubakar. The PDP is kicking about that statement. We get all of that from a PDP spokesperson also on the program tonight. It's a, 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 a packed food program. So stay with me, everyone. But let me take you around the states of the Federation for some of your political roundup stories. The Federal High Court sitting in Kaduna State has nullified the primary election conducted by the People's Democratic Party for Kaduna Central Senatorial District due to irregularities. The court presided over by Justice Mohammed Umar also ordered that a fresh primary be conducted by the party within 14 days. The court ruling followed a suit filed by one of the senatorial aspirants, Ibrahim Usman, who challenged the May 24 primaries that produced Lawa Ladamu as the winner of the election. However, not satisfied with the outcome of the primary, Ibrahim Usman, through his lawyer, Samuel Ong, asked the court to nullify the election on grounds of overvoting. He also asked the courts to conduct a fresh primary election where all the six aspirants will test their popularity in a free and fair exercise. The Ogun State Governor Dakwa Biodun has proposed a budget of 472 billion naira for the 2023 fiscal year. According to the governor, the budget is expected to be financed largely by internally generated revenue, while capital expenditure is expected to go up about 274 billion naira. In addition, we have embarked on digital transformation of key processes and revenue lines in order to improve the process and collection efficiency. And while the Ogun State Chapter of the People's Democratic Party has expelled the governorship aspirant of the party, Mr. Jimmy Lowell, by the Sikrulahi Ogundele-led state executive of the party, handing over the outcome of the report of the Standing Disciplinary Committee to state officers of the party, the chairman of the committee, Tola Odulaja, said the development became imperative in view of anti-party activities leveled against him and others. We observe that all the elected members flagrantly refused and neglected to appear before the committee to answer charges against them 
despite the open transparency displayed by the committee, in order to ensure fair earning. Katsina State Governor Aminu Masari has reconciled aggrieved members of the All Progressives Congress in the state. Masari, during the reconciliation meeting held in Musawa local government area of the state, advised his electorate not to listen to fake promises of the opposition party candidates, mostly on security. According to the governor, banditry and other related crimes will be eliminated to the barest minimum before the end of the year. He urges residents to join forces with the security agencies and other relevant stakeholders to degrade the activities of all criminal elements perpetrating crime in the state. The Court of Appeal sitting in Niola, the Adamao State Capital, has adjourned for hearing the appeal case involving Jeremy Nyami, Ainek, the People's Democratic Party, and three others seeking to disregard the Federal High Court, which upheld the election of Agbo Kefas as the governorship candidate of the PDP in Taraba State for the 2023 general elections. Justice Abandi Festus of the Appeal Court sitting in Niola, Adamao State, adjourned the case to 16th of November for hearing on the appeal. And a coalition of support groups for the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party under the aegis of youths in politics has decried what it terms a continuous harassment of their members in some parts of the country. Speaking at a news conference in Abuja, the group says several of its members, especially those who had joined them from other political parties, are daily harassed by their former political allies. Nigeria is now like the U.S. We have the Democrats and the Republicans. Now we have the APC and the PDP. There's nothing you can do about it. We are taking our decision to stand with the PDP new generation to make Atiku my next president. Thank you so much. There you have it. You've been served with your political roundup stories. Now let's get started with our very first line of conversation. The federal government has been trying to um, change the narrative uh, in the back on the heels of uh, the US, UK and some other European countries that had evacuated some of the officials out of the country. Well, they're trying to urge Nigerians to be calm and not have uh, any kind of fear. Is owing to some of the security warnings and advisories given by some of these countries. Well, Nasarawa State is one of the neighboring states to the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, where that fear um, perhaps is uh, grippling a lot of the citizens in the AFCT. And the governor is making efforts to ensure the warning does not turn into a real incident. Tonight, I'm being joined by the governor of Nasarawa State, Governor Abdullahi Sule. He joins us virtually live from Lafia. We'll be discussing this and some other political and economic issues. Thank you so much indeed, Governor Sule, for joining us. It's good to see you again. Um, thank you so much, Sean. Before I get into the security matter, thank you so much, Your Excellency. Before I get into the security situation, um, I want to know whether or not uh, there are 37 governors in Nigeria, uh, 36 state governors and one of the central bank. But a lot of the times, uh, there seems not to be alignment between the 37th governor in Nigeria and the rest of the 36th. But give me your view. Uh, you've worked in the private sector for several years, and you know some of the implications of government uh, when government makes some of these policies. The governor of Edo State, your counterpart in Edo State, has said the decision to redesign the Naira is political. Do you think so too? Well, you have to understand uh, the argument from the point of his own profession. My dear brother and friend, uh, the governor of Edo State, uh, listening to what he just said, which is the first time I actually heard him speak, uh, he mentioned that it is political, but he introduced himself as an, an economist. The man you are talking to is an engineer. He's a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. He's a fellow of the Nigerian Institution of Mechanical Engineers. So I'm not an economist. And I don't think this argument is between political parties. I think it is between him and his fellow economists who is managing the central bank. That's the governor of the central bank. So he's central bank of Nigeria, not central bank of APC. Therefore, I don't think it is an argument for APC and the governor of Edo. I think it is an argument between him being an economist and another economist who is managing the Central Bank of Nigeria. And we look at the, the argument from both sides. The Central Bank of Nigeria has clearly defined the reasons why they are doing this. According to them, there is no much money in circulation. Most of these monies are hidden. This is an opportunity to do that. I remember we had a similar situation during the Buhari Idiagon administration when they said that they were changing 
money because there was so much money actually hidden in the homes of people and they wanted a situation where to change and i remember it was in fact at the time i just returned you know to nigeria you know as a student so that was the time that some of those things were were, were happening and uh, and i saw the rush in doing that and i believe they must have achieved the result for doing that you know but if my my dear brother and friend you know governor basiki is bringing also his own argument based on his knowledge of the economy. Well, it is a very difficult argument for me to join in because I'm neither an economist, you know, nor a member of the central bank or official of the central bank. Uh, well, when there is a decision of government, uh, we know that the, the, uh, the law that guides the operation of the central bank provides that it has to be independent. But as independent as central bank should naturally be, there is still some political influence. There is the power of appointment, which is political. There is also the power to oversee and oversight the general economy, which is under political leadership of your party. Before this decision was taken, it was also uh, taken to the president for approval. And so these are political layers to the decision. And perhaps the inference Governor Obaseke is drawing into this is, why now? Is it an urgent decision to make? Uh, and I understand perhaps that you might not want to speak against the policy of the government of the APC because you're a governor uh, on the platform of the APC. But the question is, is that a decision that you think will benefit the average Nigerian? Is it an urgent policy that is required by Nigerians as of now? What makes that policy spectacular such that it has to be now? This is perhaps some of the questions that have been raised along the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the line of uh, argument of Governor Baseki. Well, I have not had his argument apart from the point that he mentioned that it is political, that this is just something that is done in order to put money in the hands of certain uh, political party. And I don't think that is an economic argument yet. I'm sure he has a lot of economic reasons why he, he gave. As I said, you know, Governor Obasiki is a very, very close friend of mine. He's, a, he's my brother indeed. And I have not had the opportunity to have this discussion with him. I will have engaged him on the discussion to educate me, you know, on the reasons of what, why he said what he said. Now, as a, uh, if you remember, we recently, you know, had a Nasarawa Investment Summit. And Governor Obasiki was one of the few governors we invited, and he was also here in Latvia. That's to show you how much I am discussing about this gentleman. And I believe he's a very good economist. You know, he has his reasons clearly. It's just that, you know, so far from the little script that you have mentioned in the news, <clears throat> I have not had the argument. But from the back, from the part of Central Bank, they were able to put the, 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 uh, uh, their own reasons. And their reasons were clearly similar to the reasons that we have seen when Buhari Idea when came to power, you know. But if you say maybe sometimes, you know, to have the, the influence of uh, government, you know, yes, they have taken the, the decision, I believe, and got the approval of Mr. President, the president of Nigeria, not president of APC or CPC or any other political party, just president of Nigeria. So they took it to him based on his own position as the president of Nigeria at the time. It was not brought to the governors, to the best of my knowledge. If it was, I wasn't there. You know, so uh, uh, other than what I saw in the pages of the newspapers as what was uh, discussed as the reasons for this um, uh, exchange, you know, I have not seen anything uh, else apart from, of course, from what uh, Governor Basiki is putting forward. Yeah. And I'm sure we're going to hear what he has to say, you know, and, and give a very good reason. So it's a, it's a point for argument. Mm. So, I mean, the, the, the query, um, perhaps the worry again, will be just in about a week or so that uh, this policy came to the fore. Dollar in the parallel market to the Naira has risen to over 700 to about 800 or more. And either linked or unlinked, there are those who believe that something is wrong. In fact, about two years ago, there are those who think that uh, the, the Naira and the dollar might exchange for about 1,000 Naira. At the time, some of those of us who are uh, very strong believers in God said, God forbid, uh, but... 800 and 1,000 Naira. I think it's closer to 1,000 Naira than it was to 500 Naira uh, about two years ago. 
Are you worried about the current trend in the Nigerian economy under your government, the APC? I am extremely worried. But then now you, you, even bring, you, you even brought another subject, you know, for us to understand. If indeed it is true that there were so many people who are hiding the Naira, it now justifies the point that probably the central bank was making. So all those people are now rushing, you know, to change the Naira to another currency. So probably that's the reason why you are saying this. Otherwise, there is no, no need for the rush, you know, to start rushing and exchange you know, uh, uh, you are Naira for dollar. Nigeria is not a dollar-denominated country. We don't use dollar for our own transactions. So why accumulating dollars? You know, so it clearly maybe even justifies the point that the central bank is making that there is too much Naira being hidden in, in homes, in houses, in, 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 in so many other places. And people are rushing right now, rather than going to the bank, you know, they are rushing to bring out all that Naira to exchange it. So that is, you see, the, the point. In fact, it's now vindicating maybe the CBN, if that is correct. You know, but again, it, 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 it takes you back really to, to understand, does it worry me? It worries me very, very badly because is, is that is making it a little easier on the part of a common man? No. Common man is actually going through the heat during the period. But what is the, uh, uh, the consolation for this? We are hoping that after all the rush and the madness about the exchange rate, you know, will, in fact, when I saw it yesterday, I was shocked. You know, to see the Naira, you know, going all, uh, all the way to 800. And the one I saw yesterday was about 818, you know. So, and, and that is really crazy, you know. So, but that can only happen when, for the same reason you have just mentioned, for the fact that maybe some people have too much Naira at home and they are trying to exchange the Naira for the dollar. So, let's move quickly to another issue. Um, the Labour Party began uh, their campaign just at your doorstep. This means uh, something. Uh, politically, what kind of uh, feeling does this give you, Governor uh, Sule? No, I, it, 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 it makes me more democratic now. Now I, I welcome Obi to come all the way to Nasarawa if that's what he wants. I was thinking that if he really wants to have a very good show, and I'm sure you, you have seen it on TV, the type of gathering that was there in life here. For your information, when we gave him the, when he asked, when they asked actually for a venue, we gave them the smallest venue of our events in life here. That is a small football field, you know, just around the science school. We, we were, not because we didn't want to give them the stadium, because our stadium actually there is war going on there. Not because we didn't want to give them the life here square, which is almost like the, the Eagle Square in size. We, we will have given them even, even the, the square, but unfortunately there was another event also going on there. So I was worried that uh, we didn't have enough space to give them, but we gave them a, 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 a field, a small football field, you know, just by a secondary school. And I don't want to criticize anybody, but you have seen the gathering, you know, as far as that field is concerned. So, you know, you find it, would, huh? I mean, the Labour Party and the obedience will say, what a massive gathering of people. A new party, a candidate that is, uh, has a burgeoning in uh, uh, political acceptance. That's what they describe it. Yeah, that, well, that is what uh, you see on, on whatever it is that you see on there. But remember, as I told you, you know, if you look at the, the, the gathering uh, in life here, not only in life here, in the science school, uh, uh, elementary school, uh, 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 you know, football field, and then that is the gathering. If that is what they are looking at as gathering, well, welcome on board. I wish them well. Is your party threatened uh, by the Labour Party? And I'm not only talking about Nasarawa State, because this perhaps will ascend some kind of jitters in Nasarawa and perhaps across board in the APC. Uh, because uh, I'm saying this because of one of the reasons uh, uh, Professor Patu told me is thinking that the, the party, Labour Party, and Peter Obi will win this election and uh, draw an influence to uh, the uh, political opinion polls that have been conducted, which most of them have been in favor of Peter Obi to be the next president of Nigeria, should uh, the poll be conducted at the time it, they were. They can listen to what uh, 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 Patu Tomi said yesterday. I quote him. He said, The youth of Africa are fed up with governments that don't work. They proved it in Kenya and Malawi. They will prove it in Nigeria. Does this kind of statement bother you in any way? And the fact that most of the poll have come out against or in the negative for your party? 
Professor Pat Utomi is my ogre, is my boss, is somebody I love and is somebody I have a lot of respect and is a first class economist. Definitely not a first class politician. So Pat Utomi himself actually stood for elections a couple of times. If he stood for elections for an economist, he will have been the president of you know, Africa, not just Nigeria. So you see, there are two different things. I don't get carried away by what people say. Now, let's come back to one statement you made so that I make it very, very clear and it's understood. In the past, the Labour Party's strength had been with Labour itself, NLC, TUC, NUTRTW, and all the rest of you. For your information, in Nasarawa State, they were not part of that gathering because they had already come out clear to endorse APC gubernatorial candidate in Nasarawa State, and they have given their reasons. And because of that, they were invited. The leadership of Labour in Nasarawa State were invited also to go and put the same kind of show, and they joined their counterparts in Kebbi State, and they also endorsed the gubernatorial candidate of APC in Kebbi State. You know, because of what they've demonstrated in uh, in Nasarawa State, so. There is absolutely no way, no how, nowhere that Nasarawa State, you know, APC will be treated by Labour Party. Now, you talk about it maybe at another level. If we are going to be treated, definitely not by Labour Party in Nasarawa State. Let me put it to you very, very clear on that. And then the results of the election will clearly tell you that. Now, coming back to the other uh, party you have, you, have, you have mentioned, to be honest with you, I don't even know who the gubernatorial candidate is in Nasrallah State. That's to show you, to be honest with you, and I'm not joking. You know, so now going back to the other uh, uh, presidential election you have mentioned, polls are polls. I live in America for most of my working life, most of my experience life. I, we have seen a lot of polls. Where polls are even more authentic than what we have here. Most of the time, those polls don't tell you the fact. It depends on who you are talking about. You are taking a segment of a people. Majority of our voters, you know, especially in northern part of Nigeria, will not be part of those kind of polls. And I'm saying majority, 90% of them. So if you are taking some polls from some elite class that are saying that and they are telling you that, yeah, it's not going to give you a real definition, you know, of the polls that you are, you are talking about. So that's why threaten. Definitely not, and I, and, I, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. You know you are my friend, I tell you the truth from the bottom of my heart. Well, uh, some of these things, sometimes, uh, Paul, I mean, I tried, I argued a bit with uh, Professor Paul Tommy. That was a very difficult thing to do because it's a political uh, economist of note. I'm just a student of uh, politics. I'm learning some of these things that you politicians are doing. But with my experience, with I tried to argue with Professor Paul Tommy yesterday, and he's saying to me that election of 2023 is going to be different, you know? That is his view. And look, that the traditional manner of our electoral or voting pattern is going to be messed up. And so we're hoping for that interesting uh, dynamics to happen. Uh, but let me take you to one of the major reasons why I invited you, Governor. Um, you, you had said that United States and the United Kingdom should stop scaring Nigeria with terror alerts. Uh, there are in fact, communities in Abuja, FCT, that are sharing, that are just, you almost think that they are uh, Abuja in the FCT, but they are Nasarawa, they are Nasarawa communities. That's how close uh, some of the communities of Nasarawa State are to the FCT. And we understand that the fear is also gripping people of your state because of this terror alert. What are you doing to ensure that your people uh, beyond what you have said to the United States and the United Kingdom, uh, keep safe. Now, you strongly believe that these countries are scaring Nigerians, or consider that the fact that they may have seen something. Do you, do you think so? Well, first and foremost, uh, Shion, let me tell you, I went to school in America, I lived in America, I work in America. Um, they have lots and lots and lots of these kinds of uh, alerts which they send. In America, you're sitting down, even by your, on your telephone, you get alert as far as the weather is concerned, as far as security is concerned, as far as this is concerned. Now, in our own country, we are not well informed to that level. So when they send this kind of alerts to us, it scares us. 
We get, we get so scared because of the nature of our own country. So, and I believe America is sending this based on their own intelligence report. And most of these intelligence reports, it's like a governor. When you are a governor, you receive intelligence reports from your DSS, sometimes from police, and sometimes from other sources. And you work on them. And you have a way of receiving them. Can you imagine if every security alert that I receive from DSS is something that DSS announces you know, on the TV and on Nigeria or on, on, on Nasarawa State every day? Can you imagine what will happen? People panic. A lot of people even leave this state. You know? But when we receive, we are able to manage. So what I was saying is that while there is nothing wrong about security report, while sometimes some of these security uh, uh, alerts may be true, Many times, remember, some of these alerts we receive that there are supposed to be no Nigeria by now. We receive a lot that by 2015, there will be no Nigeria. And we still have Nigeria. So perhaps, uh, Your Excellency, the, the, the reason why this is on another scale, or this is a bit yeah. different, is because this is perhaps the first time outside of the COVID pandemic that we will have foreign nationals uh, working for foreign governments in Nigeria be evacuated out of the country and they give specifics into this terror advisory. This is perhaps different from the ones that we have ever seen. No, that is the level of what you have seen. But we have seen situations where United Nations building was bombed, and yet there was no alert. And yet people were even, the, the whole building was, was, was attacked. And there was no alert in that, because there was no intelligence to guide people ahead of time. And we have seen some of these alerts a little bit earlier. So that's what, that's what I mean by scaring people. You see, when you scare, we, ha we have seen so many other places in Nigeria, you know, that were attacked. We have seen so many American embassies that were attacked. No alert. You know, and we have seen situations where there was alert, and yet there was nothing. I'm, I'm not saying there is anything wrong with sending alert. I'm just saying the method of communicating that alert, you know, to the, to the government of Nigeria and eventually to the people of Nigeria is just what, what my argument is all about. But, 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 but Governor, do you have a sense that we need to be more careful and we need to do more? If they see something and they send something, uh, for the quiet that we are seeing in the security, I mean, in the terror activities uh, of, these, of these bandits and terrorists, maybe there's something in the offing that we need to be more careful about. Do you and think to so? show you how... To show you how careful we are on that, the moment they, they, they send that alert, in Nasarawa State, we summon an emergency security meeting. We didn't even wait because we know our proximity to the federal capital. So the moment the alert went, mm. we actually immediately set up a security meeting where we, we had it an expanded security meeting where we involved all the security agencies and other stakeholders in the areas of security, especially those that have border with Abuja. You know, so that's to tell you we are taking it seriously. It's not that we are saying that it is not important. My argument is just about the communication of how that is. If we are sending something like that to Nigeria and say it's scared that about there is going to be bombing, please, Niger uh, American citizens, come back to America. British citizens, come back to Britain. This and that. I mean, what, what kind of... Uh, right. This is just my line of argument. Yeah, on, on a final note, and perhaps just in 30 seconds, um, yeah. the election that will come for us is the presidential election. How that pans out will also affect the election, the governorship election that will come about two weeks later, which is the yeah. one that you will be involved with. Now, give me an understanding, Governor Sule. Uh, it's a 50-50 for some people. In fact, some people think that your party is threatened. There are those who believe that after the end of President Buhari's tenure, that the APC will disintegrate, that things are not looking well for your party, just in 30 seconds. Should your party lose this election, what do you think would have been the cause? I don't believe, first and foremost, I don't believe this party will lose election. I look at the same challenges we are having is what the other political parties are facing. I strongly believe, you know, all the other political parties are facing their own challenges in one way or the other. Two, I was in Kano about a week ago with our own presidential candidate. The same day we were in Kano, these are the two biggest uh, uh, states when it comes to the number of voters. Kano was standstill. It took us more than five hours to move from the airport in Kano 
just close to the government house. You have seen what happened that day in Lagos. You know, so really some of these cares that you are getting may be on the pages of newspapers. We have seen no other presidential candidate that had that had that had that kind of crowd that we have seen. And these are not hired crowd, these are crowd that believe in the party. Yeah. These are people that are saying that we still believe in APC. We have seen, we have done so much, but as you say, you have only 30 seconds. I don't want to take more than your 30 seconds because I also believe in time. But this party, I don't believe will, 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 will lose election based on the records of what the party has done. Thank I'm you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Governor thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure having you around on the program. Thank you so thank much. Thank you indeed. so much, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Let's read yes now, everyone. The presidential candidate of the PDP, Atiku Abubakar, has been in the United States attending meetings. But as he was there, the vice presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Senator Kashim Shatima, has described the presidential candidate of the PDP, Atiku Abubakar, as a political tourist who will be permanently retired to the United Arab Emirates after the 2023 election. Mr. Shatima spoke at the presentation of the manifesto of the APC to the business community and organized private sector in Lagos yesterday. Take a listen to the vice P VP candidate of the APC. Leadership goes beyond skewing dubious statistics or basking in a mediocre performance as the governor of Anambra State. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I respect Atiku Abubakar, but leadership goes beyond understand man like rantings, someone who cannot unite his own party. I wonder how he's going to unite this nation. You heard him. Uh, Senator Kashim Shatima, VP candidate of the uh, APC. Well, the PDP has been reacting. There is an official statement coming out uh, from the PDP. They're not taking these line low. They feel that that statement is not uh, uh, coming from uh, Senator Kashim Shatima is unacceptable, and they believe that the pedigree and the profile of the presidential candidate of the PDP is not exactly how it was described. Say, Alaji Shatima, I like the article of Baba, cannot be trusted with the coming economy of Nigeria. No RSE could be worse than this. Let's get more reaction on this. I'm being joined by the presidential spokesperson of the PDP, Mr. Daniel Buwala. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Thank you for having me. What an interesting time. Yeah. <laughs> You're from Brono State, right? Yes, I am. From and Senator Shetima is from Brono State right. also. Well, before we get into that, right. why is your candidate in the United States? Well, thank you. Uh, Atiku Abubakar was invited by the Department of State, and um, he went to the U.S. primarily to have a conversation with the U.S. government around good governance, things that we share, uh, com uh, we have shared interests, such as good governance, free and fair election, democratic governance, non-interference by state actors or non-state actors uh, in electoral process. And uh, we were able to extract the commitment from the U.S. government that they will ensure they play their part in ensuring that there is a free and fair process. They even promise in the build-up to the election they will announce stiffer sanctions on individual or institutions that attempt to interfere uh, with the election. Which, which institution in the United States said this? Is it the Department of State. The Department of State. It's like Foreign State. Affairs Ministry. Absolutely. He also engaged with the United States Institute of Peace, of course, which is an institute that deals with aspects of conflict resolution and all that. Had also interaction with Chamber of Commerce. You, see, you can see that our engagement is from a more matured point of view. We're looking, because we know the problems that we're confronted with in Nigeria today. But it is saddening that in the midst of this cacophony, you find people who could not honor invitation given to them by the Chamber of Commerce, to which both Atiku and, in fact, Peter Obi, that they were ridiculing, attended. They instead organized their own private sector meeting where they went and have what we call the Night of a Thousand Lab. It was so comic, but it is not surprising for us because, one, it appears they have the understanding that their presidential candidate is boring and that uh, he won't be able to communicate in clear terms. So they decided to get a vice presidential candidate that will share in this comedy and comic relief, which is what he did. But in case if he forgets, maybe a little refresher will help him. Atiku Abubakar served as the vice president from 1999 to 2007. 
And when they came in, Atiku Abubakar was the one practically like the sitting president because President Obasanjo was all over the map to seek for debt cancellation and to see how we can pilot the nation. There was not a single day Atiku Abubakar or Obasanjo blamed the economy to the military. And yet everybody knew how the military bastardized the economy. Atiku sat on the economic policy that brought about revolution in the telecom industry, that created jobs. In case he forgets, Atiku Abubakar sat as the vice president over a government and economy that so to the debt cancellation in our foreign reserve, I mean, of our, of, of our debt. And then we have increase in our foreign reserve. Atiku presided as a vice presidential candidate and on many occasions as a sitting president because we did an analysis and came to a finding that President Obasanjo traveled for a period of about six months over a period of the first time. It was Atiku that sat. And yet, Atiku managed insecurity in such a way that we had, you remember, we have Bakasi, we have uh, uh, Odudua in the Niger Delta, we have this boil bunkering and vandalization. And in the north, we had Sharia, which created a scenario in Nigeria. There was never a complaint or blame fixing. He sat over that. In case he doesn't know, Atiku was the vice president that provided soko and relief to the state where himself and I share in Borno that brought about the peace and stability at the time. But if he wants to know his identity, and which is because his perspective, is that he was a governor in Borno State around the time when uh, Governor Wiki, sitting as a presiding minister for education, wrote a letter about the fears based on security report that people, pupils or students who were preparing to sit for exams should be relocated to the capital because of insecurity. And there was a security report at the time. He ignored security report. He rebuffed the instruction of Wiki, and that was how the Chibok girls were stolen, were kidnapped. He was the governor around the time when the man who instituted or masterminded the Madala bombing was found in Borno Governor Lodge around the time he was a governor. And it is still around his time where he said he was bringing in 30 billion to create what he called Borno Investment Hub. That place where he called the Investment Hub, that's where goats now, they sit to rest after they go about the places. The 30 billion cannot be accounted for. Most of this infrastructure you see in Borno, like schools, all these you know, you know, face-looking things that they say he created. I bet you, Shewun, we are a good journalist to look at it. Since when the insecurity started in Borno till today, if you see how many billions of dollars that our foreign partners can be, all these multinational NGOs that pump into that state. So whether in the area of education, in the area of relief material, in all these other areas, they provided funding to support. He, what he calls a stellar performance. He said, Jimovia is here. Jimovia should be able to know I perform better as a governor and I rose. Let me tell you, he presided as a governor that domiciled the money of Borno in a bank for the purposes of profit by the bank as a result of which he was promoted, promoted, and he got to where you are. That is the economy. They gathered in that meeting and they were sharing to the Nigerians. Right, I mean, these are, these of course, are some, I mean, you're a politician, I understand the reason why you're speaking like this. But of course, well, as a lawyer, I mean, as a lawyer, you also know the, the, the fact that these things have to be backed. Uh, the libellous ones and the one that can... That's what the libellous the, 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 the family, Because when you say uh, that he's found with so-so person and he's found with so-so person... So he was person, a governor. The what inference said, is, yeah. He was a governor. Yeah. He was a governor of the state when a mastermind of a bombing was found in Borno Governor Lodge. No, I did not say he did it. He was a governor. So let, let me ask you, uh, in the case of Peter Obi, mm -hmm. and I'm coming back to Kashim Shatima, right. why was it that your supporters were criticizing Peter Obi when he was abroad, consulting with uh, Nigerians abroad and having consultations abroad? Now your candidate is abroad. Right. Uh, how, what would, how would you react we, to that? We, we have had no material time actually criticize Peter Obi for going abroad and engaging. You've forgotten how so your supporters no, were I would criticizing tell you, no, I would tell you what Peter Obi when they say, oh, he's going to, to abroad to, to, uh, to, instead of him coming on the ground to come and do I the work. I was part of those that in fact said that all the places Peter Obi was visiting were Nigerian communities in different parts of the Western world who are not likely to come back to Nigeria and vote. And he ignored the primary responsibility he had because we felt he came through a party that has a short time to make impact. And so he had a misplaced priority. In the case of Atiku Abubakar, 
I think we we'll can engage with development partners. There is virtually nothing we need in terms of growth and development as a country to which we don't look up to the U.S. He didn't go to just see a group of people who are having some picnic, attend a group of meetings where there are people who are having dinner. He engaged with the Department of State. Department of State is like Foreign Affairs Ministry. It is coaching and compelling. In other words, his visit to the U.S. should even benefit the government of Nigeria yeah. of today. So, yeah. so let's go back to what Kashim Shetima said. Yeah. And he, he made a point. He said, uh, your, part, uh, your presidential candidate uh, had been making divisive statements. Right. Let me respond to it. Uh, his own principal said, Emile Kun, when he gave the famous and, and what has come to become the national anthem of the party, when he said, Olule, Oshekini, Olile, Oshekeji, Olule, Osheketa, Olule. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Olule, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's very horrible. <laughs> so what, I, it was in that meeting he said it was his own turn to be president. It's not about the people. It's not about everyone. But escalated to the most recent visit he made to Adefaranti. He was telling him that not a single Yoruba is opposing the idea of me securing the ticket. He's not talking about Nigeria or APC. Then he added, he said, I promise you when I go to the election, I will bring back the trophy. In other words, his idea of the race to presidency is like you go and get a trophy to your ethnic enclave. There is not a single divisive statement that matches that. But we are not surprised that these things did not find their ways into print and electronic media. Because just last week, he had a meeting with editors in Oriental Hotel in Lagos, where he was literally persuading and buying them over to his view. We have also heard when he said he will curse anybody that tried to settle Wiki and Atiku. We are not perturbed by that. But let me tell you what they are selling to the Nigerian people, what they call uh, renewed hopelessness. In their renewed hopelessness, what is their economic that is, model? You call it renewed hopelessness, but they call it renewed hope. But let me tell you why it is hopeless. This current government is the government of APC. They don't even know. Their entire manifesto is a campaign against the government. And a kingdom divided against itself cannot start. If you read their campaign manifesto, it is activism. You are doing activism against who? You now said you want to remove subsidy. You forgot when Jonathan wanted to remove subsidy, all of them went to the street and called the heavens to come down on him. Remember also, as soon as the election was coming close when they talked about subsidy, they said, who is subsidizing who? We're going to remove subsidy from day one. Eight years down the line, they have not. Even when industry, uh, the PIA was passed into law, which created sort of the platform for the removal of subsidy, they all came out against it. Today, even unionists in their party are saying that they want to remove subsidy. Nigerians can't be fooled in that area. They also talked about, we want to give student loan, we want to give this, and we have to give that. Read that uh, renewed hopelessness. Where are they going to get the funding? There is no economic blueprint for job creation. And it is even surprising to me that they gathered these same people you see in the meeting they had, they call private sector players. When you look through, you will see wounded businessmen. Businessmen who have lost billions and billions as a result of incoherent policies of APC. And they are promising the same people right. that they are going to create an enabling environment for private sector. You are from Boronu State. I am. Are you proud to be from that state? I am proud to are be Are you proud Boronuma. that Kashim Shetima was your governor for eight years? No, I'm not. In fact, let me tell you something. But it seems your, your statement is a bit different from when you were a member of the APC. I have never spoken about Borno because I come from the part of Borno that is treated as if we are not even the Nigerians. I know I've never talked about Borno, but let me even tell you the unpopularity of APC in Borno State. Their governor came to, went to my part of the uh, state. You know the song they were singing, Two Billion. Anytime you find the governor or anybody asking what is the meaning of two billion, they will tell you. The senators in their party went to different parts. They were literally chased out. To tell you how unpopular APC is, the Northwest gave overwhelming votes to APC. What have the Northwest benefited? When you saw it, so what's the you meaning of two billion it. from what your people are saying? The people, according to the report we heard, that the President Buhari went to Borno and he was having engagement in the Shewu's Palace, where the Shewu's Palace were demanding more funding. That's what I heard. You know, I've not verified more funding. And it's in the tune of two billion. And the governor, so when they were asking Buhari for more funding, that Buhari in response said, every month I give two billion in addition to whatever is accrued to the state. 
and the people's eyes were open. But that is even a chance play compared to a 30 we, billion. We need to confirm that, part, that particular Yeah, that's report, what I'm sorry. saying for verify. But that's why I say, ask them why they are singing that song. So look at infrastructure, for, for God's sake. Do you know the World Bank finding, mm. based on the recommendation of African Union, a projected budget for development around Africa? They say one kilometer, the threshold for one kilometer mm. of road. They said Nigeria, this APC government, inflated it by 100%. So if a million dollar was used, for example, one kilometer, this APC were charging Ten million dollars for that. We need to leave it at that. Uh, but but you need to come and let's talk and about your man. And he appeared in that meeting in a suit, like <laughs> a vulture, and he's accusing Atiku who taught him politics. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Daniel Boala, uh, for coming tonight, presidential spokesperson of the PDP. Indeed, an interesting time for our nation as we try to uh, break down those uh, or integrate interrogate those who want to be president thank you so much everyone for watching i'll see you again tomorrow i'm sean wakimaloe god bless nigeria